Japanese officials are trying to find a place to put ton upon ton of radioactive waste fallout from the nuclear disaster at Fukushima Daiichi polluted soil and water all around the plant. Government officials need to dispose of more than 80,000 tons of waste. They are obliged to find dump sites in each prefecture for sludge and ash with high levels of cesium. Central government officials have already approached several prefectures. They want to set up permanent disposal facilities. But many residents don't want the waste in their communities. No shit. The nuclear accident in Fukushima forced them to rethink their relationship with energy. Some scientists have found a source of methane gas somewhere unusual but readily available. And it's only a flush away. NHK World's Rena Nakano explains. You wouldn't believe what's making this methane gas meter spin. Sludge. It's made of organic waste such as feces and hair. Government officials need to dispose of more than 80,000 tons of waste. They are obliged to find dump sites in each prefecture for sludge and ash with high levels of cesium. Wastewater from around 300,000 people ends up here at the sewage treatment plant. Conventionally, sludge is seen just as unwanted waste. Dehydrating and treating it is a necessary but extremely costly operation. But these scientists have found an efficient way to turn it into a resource. We're making a lot of methane gas, quickly, in a compact facility. Atsushi Miyata says there are some key factors that set the new method apart from traditional sludge collection. The secret weapon? These little foam pieces. Treatment centers usually rely on gravity. It's a slow process. They have to wait for the sludge to drain to the bottom of the tank. The new method speeds things up. When the wastewater gets poured into the tank, the foam acts as a filter. This traps the solids underneath and only the reclaimed water pours out from the top. The separated sludge is then collected from the bottom of the tank while the foam floats back to the top and makes it easier to collect the concentrated sludge. The idea to use this foam material revolutionized the process of solid liquid separation. They're able to collect 40% more sludge, and what used to take two hours now only takes 15 minutes. Now that this smelly substance is collected in mass quantities, the next step is to turn it into methane. But it won't do it alone. It needs the help of bacteria. First, the sludge gets mixed with compost waste. Then, that mixture is poured into a gas formation chamber with hundreds of fabric rods. They carry a special type of bacteria, which breaks down the sludge and turns it into methane. Keeping the tank's temperature at 55 degrees Celsius increases bacterial activity. The same amount of gas can now be created in five days instead of 20. Conventionally, the methane is burned for thermal power generation. Here, they create clean fuel cell energy. It's more efficient and results in zero carbon emissions. So far, we're only experimenting with 5% of all our wastewater. But if we implement this new method to the whole plant, we can create up to 60% of all the energy we use here. That means we can save about $750,000 annually. This pilot program is on the brink of becoming a reality. It's attracting the interest of Japanese sewage industry officials. But they're also getting inquiries from overseas. We usually use the conventional way of doing things. So what we learned here, we hope to enhance the conventional way and come up with a system which is much better, energy efficiency and more environmental friendly. In Japan, sewage plants use almost 1% of the nation's electricity. It takes a lot of time, money, and effort to clean the country's water. But this experiment suggests an alternative to sewage treatment and paves the way for taking the waste out of waste. Japan will again send a team of NGO members to the Pacific coast of North America to discuss specific ways of disposing drifting debris from the March 11th disaster. 
The government sent a team of Japan Environmental Action Network members to the U.S. in August to conduct a fact-finding survey. It has decided to again send the NGO group to North America and Hawaii as early as December. The NGO group will conduct a fact-finding survey on drifting debris in cooperation with local private organizations. Following the survey, the group will work out specifics on how to dispose of debris after hearing opinions of experts. Japan will offer about $247,000 for the activity. About 1.5 million tons of wreckage is believed to have washed into the Pacific after last year's tsunami. The Environment Ministry's latest simulation has most of the debris reaching the Pacific coast of North America from around next month. Fukushima statt heute Morgen. In diesem Hotel trifft sich die Gesundheitskommission der Präfektur. Sie präsentiert neue Zahlen über die Veränderungen an den Schilddrüsen bei Kindern, gut anderthalb Jahre nach der Atomkatastrophe. Den Vorsitz hat Professor Yamashita, der den Bewohnern Fukushimas nach dem GAU empfohlen hat, viel zu lachen, dann könnten ihnen die Strahlen nichts anhaben. Die Öffentlichkeit ist zugelassen, darf aber keine Fragen stellen. Dr. Suzuki, der die Untersuchungen an über 57.000 Kindern geleitet hat, stellt die Ergebnisse vor. Bei mehr als 42 Prozent der Kinder wurden Knoten oder Zysten festgestellt. Nach Tschernobyl lag die Zahl dort zwischen 0,5 und 1 Prozent, gemessen damals von Professor Yamashita. Was uns aber noch viel mehr verwundert, niemand aus der Expertenrunde fragt nach den Ursachen für diesen hohen Wert. Wir fahren nach Minamisoma am Rande der Sperrzone. Dort will Dr. Suzuki am Nachmittag besorgte Eltern informieren. Wir treffen uns mit Herrn Yoshida. Er hat wie die meisten Menschen hier den Glauben daran verloren, dass die Regierung mit den Folgen der Katastrophe seriös umgeht. Und er zeigt uns auch warum. Überall in der Region hat die Regierung Strahlenmessstationen aufstellen lassen, auch vor diesem Kindergarten. Aber die Werte decken sich nicht mit denen, die Herr Yoshida an der gleichen Stelle misst. Die Strahlung, die von den offiziellen Messstationen gemessen wird und die, der wir tatsächlich ausgesetzt sind, unterscheiden sich massiv. An manchen Orten liegt die tatsächliche Strahlung um das Fünffache höher. Wir haben das der Regierung mitgeteilt. Erst als die Bürger Minamisomas das selbst herausfinden, räumt die Regierung ein, dass ihre offiziellen Messungen praktisch alle fehlerhaft sind. Wir haben die Regierung gefragt, warum sie uns diese nutzlosen Messstationen hinstellt und sie haben nur gesagt, ihr wollte doch Messstationen haben. Ich denke, sie wollen die Folgen der Katastrophe herunterspielen. In einem großen Konferenzsaal in der Stadt versucht Dr. Suzuki den Eltern die Untersuchungsergebnisse zu erklären. Und er kommt zu dem Schluss, dass sie sich keine Sorgen machen sollen. Der hohe Befund an Schilddrüsenanomalien käme wohl vor allem durch verbesserte Messmethoden zustande, sagt er. Die Menschen hier aber glauben ihm nicht. Es ist nicht richtig von ihm uns zu sagen, dass alles okay ist, wenn er offensichtlich selbst keine Ahnung hat, was die Gründe dafür sind. Auf unsere Frage, ob die hohe Zahl an Schilddrüsenanomalien bei Kindern denn normal sei, erzählt uns Dr. Suzuki, dass es noch keine Vergleichsstudien gäbe. Aber vielleicht hätten die Kinder hier ja einfach zu viel Jod und Meeresfrüchte gegessen. Ob es etwas mit der Strahlung zu tun habe, könne er uns nicht sagen. Wir sind lediglich hier, um den Eltern die Ergebnisse unserer Untersuchung mitzuteilen. Es sieht ganz so aus, als müssten Herr Yoshida und all die anderen Eltern noch lange warten, bis sie eine Erklärung für Zysten und Knoten an den Schilddrüsen ihrer Kinder bekommen. Economic policy is not the only thing that is facing an uncertain future. So are plans for energy. In September, the government mapped out new energy measures. They included the termination of nuclear power generation by the 2030s. The government was also planning to come up by year end with a framework for introducing renewable and other forms of alternative energy. Final decisions on these matters are made at meetings of the national policy minister, the, economy, the economy, trade and industry minister, and other cabinet officials. But it's now unclear whether such meetings will be held by the end of the year. In addition, debate on the country's comprehensive basic energy plan has been shelved. The plan was expected to address future electricity needs. Voters in Japan have a day to mark on their calendars. Prime Minister Yoshiko Noda dissolved the lower house of the Diet and set a general election for Sunday, December 16th. His Democratic Party has been in power since 2009. He's framing the vote as a choice between the politics of the past and the future.
The Speaker of the Lower House formally announced the dissolution of the chamber. The campaign officially starts December 4th. Voters go to the polls 12 days later. World Bank analysts are sounding the alarm over climate change. They say the world could heat up by 4 degrees Celsius this century, and they warn that would be devastating for developing countries. The analysts warn that current pledges to cut greenhouse gas emissions are not enough. They say surging energy consumption in developing countries is driving temperatures up. The bank's experts predict a large decrease in Arctic sea ice. They say sea levels will rise by up to a meter. The report warns that developing nations will be hit by floods, droughts and food shortages. It's calling on nations to take more active steps to reduce emissions. The bank says it's possible to keep warming below 2 degrees.